is for Maris, as in Roger, and Mantle, as in Mickey. And now Moss, as a rookie named Kevin, takes over as a Yankee home run hero. But today, the Yanks face Oakland's Bob Welch, whose 18 victories are the most in the majors. Jerry Reinsdorf owns the White Sox and chairs the committee that will vote on who runs the Yanks. We'll get his views. And isn't this guy too old to be pitching? We'll find out what Bob Euchre's doing back in uniform. Major League Baseball is next on CBS Sports. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to a special Sunday edition of Major League Baseball here on CBS. This afternoon, you will see the New York Yankees try to win their first game of the season against the Oakland Athletics. The A's have won all eight meetings so far this year. But first, it's a busy Major League scoreboard this afternoon. Let's update you, beginning with the game at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, where the Reds lead San Francisco 4-2. That game has moved to the third inning. The Reds scored all four of their runs in the first inning, two of them coming home on Barry Larkin's double down the left field line off the wall. They scored them off of Scott Gorelch. Robbie Thompson has homered, and the Giants have come back to cut that margin in half. But right now, it's a 4-2 Cincinnati lead. At Atlanta, the Dodgers have gotten an RBI single from Eddie Murray and a two-run double from Rick Dempsey and lead the Braves 3-0 in the second. They are in the fifth inning at Pittsburgh, and St. Louis leads the Pirates by three. Vince Coleman had perhaps the shortest triple of the season. The blooper down the right field line. Jose Lean can't catch up. Bodies go flying, and speaking of flying, look at Coleman around second on his way to third. He scored from there. The Cards scored all three of their runs in the third inning, and they lead the Pirates 3-0 in the fifth inning. They're in the fourth at Montreal, and the Expos are playing home run derby today. Dave Martinez has hit two two-run shots. Tim Raines has one, and they lead the Phillies 5-2. to two. In the second inning at Kansas City, the Royals lead the Brewers by a 2-0 count. Jim Eisenreich has an RBI single, and so does Gerald Perry. And they're in the fifth inning at Cleveland. The Indians lead the Tigers 3-2. Travis Fryman and Alan Trammell have both homered for Detroit, but they trail by one. When we come back, oh, first we'll talk first about the uh, PGA Championship, which is now into its final round, and Wayne Grady is leading Fred Couples by two shots. Now, when we come back, you will hear from Chicago White Sox owner Jerry Reinsdorf, who heads the American League Committee that will eventually approve the Yankees' new managing general partner, whoever that may be. CBS Sports presents Major League Baseball. Today's pregame is brought to you by Newprin, the medicine that gives you big pain relief in a little yellow pill and tablets and caplets. And by Minwax Wood Finishes. Minwax makes wood beautiful. Okay. The owners of the New York Yankees are scheduled to meet to name a new managing general partner to replace George Steinbrenner. But that's only the first step in the approval process. The nominee then has to receive the approval of Major League Baseball's eight-man ownership committee and then collect a minimum ten votes from American League owners and seven from the National League. White Sox owner Jerry Reinsdorf chairs that ownership committee, and I asked him late yesterday what time frame we're dealing with to approve a new Yankee chief. Well, it's not something that will be done in a matter of uh, one or two weeks. Uh, we, we can't even begin to start our work until we, we know who we're going to be dealing with. But there's an awful lot that goes into approving a transfer of control. The, the eight owners on this committee take their work very seriously because essentially what we will be doing will be approving a new partner. And it's very important to us that we get the quality of people in baseball that we think we're going to need as we go forward in the 90s. Well, what I'm wondering, Jerry, is what happens when the August 20th deadline, the one that uh, the commissioner has given George Steinbrenner, comes and goes, and there is no managing partner that has been approved as yet, and what you have is a team in the league that is essentially without leadership. Well, the commissioner is going to have to provide for some sort of an interim procedure. Somebody if, uh, is going to have to take over on August the 20th, uh, regardless of uh, the fact that there will not have been somebody approved as a successor to George. And I've spoken to the commissioner, and I know that he will be uh, coming up with that interim procedure within the next day or so. Jerry, I know over the years you've been close to George Steinbrenner. Do you have any ind indication as to who it might be? No, I don't. Uh, you know, it, it, we've heard rumors that it might be Hank Steinbrenner. Uh, we've also heard rumors that Hank doesn't want to do it. We'll ju we're just going to have to wait and see. I have absolutely no insight into who that's going to be. If it were Hank Steinbrenner, would he win your vote of approval? 
Well, I can't answer that right now because I think anybody who uh, judges uh, Hank Steinbrenner or anybody else before the uh, research and the investigation has been done would not be very fair. I, I, w nobody should come into this in favor of or against anybody. We have a lot of work to do in, in checking out the person that's going to get nominated, and nobody should be making a decision until that work is done. And we'll keep an eye out today should the statement come from the commissioner regarding that interim procedure Jerry Reinsdorf talked about. Well, because Jose Canseco's bad back will again keep him on the bench today, we won't see him go head-to-head -head with the young Yankee slugger who is attracting so much attention, Kevin Moss. But our Tim McCarver did get them side-by-side -side a short while ago. All right, two guys with enormous appeal and enormous ability. Jose Canseco from the West Coast, Kevin Moss from the East Coast. If you had any advice for Kevin Moss, what would it be? I was just telling him really come out here and have fun. Uh, his first year rookie, he's had great numbers uh, coming into the season so far. And uh, really there's so much pressure and so much emphasis put on ball players, the money they make nowadays. Really try to keep the game simple. Come out here, uh, enjoy yourself, uh, enjoy the media, enjoy the fans. And, you know, uh, he's definitely going to put up great numbers, especially what he's done so far. And uh, hopefully can continue that. Kevin, can you enjoy the media in New York City? Well, I've enjoyed it so far, but it's only been uh, it's only been good things so far, and uh, I'm just hoping to uh, try to keep a positive attitude on everything, and uh, through the ups and the downs, just trying to stay at one level and not getting not not, not getting too excited about anything. And uh, the way things have been going right now, you know, hopefully at the end of the season I can look back and say, you know, you had a good year, but uh, just taking it one day at a time. As Don Mattingly, who broke in as a first baseman in New York about eight years ago, has he had any advice for you? Well, he's been helping me a lot, you know. He's a uh, uh, true professional and, and a good friend, and uh, he's been helping me out in any way he can, just hitting and, and fielding, and I've gotten a lot from him. Thanks a lot, guys. I hope your back's better. Thank you. <laughs> you get it this time? Jose with a major league concern for our videotape capabilities. We're coming back in a moment. The question is, is Mr. Baseball getting ready for a comeback? On the game taking place at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Hal Morris has just homered for the Cincinnati Reds to boost the Reds' lead to 5-3. to three. Gary Carter's sacrifice fly had pulled the Giants to within one, but Morris slams number six of the year into the seats in right, and that gives the Cincinnati Reds the 5-3 to three lead over San Francisco that game now into the third inning. Well, there is no one chasing this man's record. There is no debate about whether or not he will enter the Hall of Fame, yet he is called with tongue cemented solidly in cheek, Mr. Baseball. Former catcher turned Milwaukee play-by-play -play broadcaster Bob Euchre is well known as one of the game's most humorous observers. And when he's not behind the mic, he's pitching batting practice with a purpose. It's an everyday thing. It's, it's not something I do uh, once in a while. I do it every day, uh, more so looking down the road than, uh, than for today. Uh, expansion is coming in a couple of years, and uh, uh, the Japanese people have never seen me play either. Quick, while someone runs out to warn the Japanese, the question is, Yuke, during BP, does it matter who you're pitching to out there? Names don't mean anything to me when I'm out there throwing batting practice. I'm trying to get people out. Most batting practice pitchers go out there and try to let the guys hit the ball. I, uh, I'm out there on a different mission. Uh, I'm trying to get them out, and if some guy hits a ball too hard off me, I'll throw one at his head. I'm not, uh, I'm not ashamed to do that either. I think... Uh, it prepares the guys for the game a little bit. I'll, I'll come high and tight on them, uh, and if they hit one back through the middle on me, that really aggravates me. I might throw two at once. May he pitch BP for 100 years. Right now, we are ready for baseball. The Yankees and the Oakland Athletics. I'll be back throughout the afternoon with scores and highlights. CBS Sports coverage of Major League Baseball will continue after this word from your local state. championship flag a team must work hard for 162 games and the Oakland A's know that even when a star player like Conseco goes down or Ricky Henderson can't play the others step in like power hitting Mark McGuire and pure hitting Carney Lansford but most of all these Oakland A's do the little things they hit and run and they make it work they advance a runner and they drive him home. In addition, they play great defense. Everyone has a job to do and they do it. The result, baseball's best team. For Stump Merrill in the New York Yankees, that caliber of team is only a dream. For the moment, all he has is some fine young players like Jim Lyric. 
and Oscar Azokar. And most of all, a power-hitting first baseman, Kevin Moss. He is the pillar for the future. Today, the Yankees meet the world champion A's as CBS Sports presents Major League Baseball. Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to have a sellout crowd here in the Oakland Coliseum and another wonderful day to enjoy baseball as the Yankees attempt to beat Oakland for the first time in 1990. A year ago, California was only one game behind and Oakland had won 70. Look, they've won 72 already, and little wonder the White Sox have a tough time keeping up. They are four and a half behind. I'm Jack Buck with Tim McCarver, and this Yankee team hasn't won here all year. Maybe they'll have a better chance today. Jose Canseco can't play, and Ricky Henderson is out of the lineup. All they have to do, Tim McCarver, is beat Bob Welch. Now, Bob Welch, what a deal the Athletics made three years ago when they obtained Bob Welch. Since that time, he's been 52 and 21. Bob Welch this year, the winningest pitcher in baseball. He's 18 and four, an earned run average hovering right around three. So it's indeed going to be a tough assignment for the Yankees today. Two right-handers will pitch today, and that means Mike Witt for the Yankees. Let's have a good one. CBS Sports presents Major League Baseball. Today's game is brought to you by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Scope, the best thing, first thing in the morning. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, know when to say when. The folks have an easy time coming to this ballpark with the BART system here in the Bay Area, and these folks get here early to watch their ball club, which is rolling right along. Previously, Bob Welch, season's high was 17 victories. So this is the banner campaign for him. And those are some of his stats. Here is the group playing behind him, Tim. Defensively, Doug Jennings in left field. You remember that Jose Canseco was scratched from yesterday's lineup. Dave Henderson in center field. And Felix Jose, who is slated in left field, is in right field today, just like yesterday. Carney Lansford, the third baseman, the glue of the Oakland defense, Walt Weiss at shortstop, Willie Randolph, the ex-captain of the Yankees at second base, Mark McGuire over at first, behind the plate, Ron Hassey. He has caught every start for Bob Welch this year, and on the mound, Bob Welch. Here is the lineup for the New York Yankees, and Roberto Kelly is getting ready to go. Steve Sanks, Oscar Azokar, Mel Hall, Kevin Moss, Matt Noakes is the designated hitter, Jim Leyritz at third, Bob Guerin the catcher, Alvaro Espinosa is the shortstop, and they'll pitch the right-hander Mike Witt. And here is the first pitch of the day to Roberto. And it's outside ball one. As Kelly had a couple of hits yesterday, he's up to 286. And he is one of the few good base stealers on this Yankee team. And it's out of play. That's strike two. Another lovely afternoon here in Oakland. We were here yesterday for CBS, and perhaps you saw that game, and you'll get to know these two teams a little bit better this afternoon. Count one and one, and the foul at the feet of the catcher, Hassey. The plate umpire is Tim McClellan. He's happy that ball hit the catcher rather than him. <laughs> Derwood Merrill is umpiring at first, Don Denkinger at second, and John Shulock at third base. The pitch to Kelly, and it missed outside, two and two. Speaking of, Tim McClellan, the plate umpire, his son Cody, is celebrating his fourth birthday. He wanders to say hello to the youngster for his birthday tomorrow. Kelly Fowles went off, two and two. Kelly Sachs and Azokar here in the first for Oakland. They've lost all, the Yankees have lost all five here. And they've lost all three. Oakland has played at New York. Again, he missed the outside corner. And the crowd behind home plate grown. They want to help Mr. McClellan. It's three and two. And a fly ball that should be handled by Felix Jose to start this game. One up. Uh, 
This is the top ballpark for home runs despite these dimensions. 330 down the line, 375 in the power alleys, 400 to center. You would think the ball flies out of here, but it does not. Only two parks in the American League are tougher in which to hit home runs. Comiskey Field or Comiskey Park at, in Chicago and in Kansas City. Here the strike on the inside edge. A good moving fastball to Steve Sachs. Sachs four for his last 38. He's, he's in a mini free fall. And it's low and away, a ball and a strike. Best way to, to get out of a slump is to try to go back through the box. That way you keep your front shoulder in there. Wouldn't be su surprised to see Sachs try to go through the box or to right field. Or to try to bunt the ball. Yeah, you know, bunting gets you a base hit, but it doesn't get you out of the slump. <laughs> Two balls and a strike with one out here in the first. <laughs> back to the mound. He tried to hit it up the middle, but the pitcher got in the way. Two out. He did hit it up the middle. Yeah, that does happen. Once the pitcher releases the ball, he becomes the eighth infielder. Rather routine play for Bob Welch. And there are two out here in the first. Here's an interesting young player for the Yanks, Oscar Azokar. He has a unique batting stance. His feet are wide apart, and his front foot hardly moves when he swings. He fouls at strike one. If you can concentrate on his front foot. Yeah, when you when you're spread that far apart, you can't stride any farther. Otherwise, you'd be a gymnast. I mean, Mary Lou Retton couldn't do what this guy does from the start. And he pokes it in the left, and back goes Jennings, and down go the Yankees. One, two, three. They've scored very few runs against Oakland this year. Yankees went down in order in the first inning, and now the A's will bat against the six foot seven inch right hander, Mike Witt, with a record of one and four. Here's the lineup for the home team. Arnie Lansford is going to be leading off, and Doug Jennings in left field, Dave Henderson in center, Mark McGuire at first, Ron Hassey the catcher, Felix Jose in right. The designated hitter is the catcher Terry Steinbach and at shortstop Walt Weiss, Willie Wandoff at second base. And this is Lansford. He had three hits and a walk yesterday as his average up to 279. He's done very well against Witt for his career. Lansford 23 for 60 against Mike Witt. And with Witt, elbow surgery. Or not surgery, but on the DL with a bad elbow on June 6th. He was out for two months. And you can expect to see many more fastballs than you would ordinarily see against Witt because it hurts him to throw that curveball. So these A's can dig in and look for some fat pitches. And meanwhile, Witt will try to work the corners. He falls behind. And even more so on the count, 2-0. But you're looking at a very good leadoff man, Carney Lansford, filling in for Ricky Henderson. It'll be a while before he plays. That's ball three. The Yankees have been handing out a lot of free passes. When you do that to a team such as Oakland, why well, you double your problems. You're looking at a fellow who won 18 games previously, Mike Witt. And he pumps a strike in there, three and one. Kind of an interesting career. He won 18 games back in 1986. He pitched a perfect game on the last day of the season in 1984. One of 11 nine-inning perfect games pitched in Major League history. And there's a bouncing ball to deep short. Can Espinosa throw him out? He bounces it too late. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this shortstop. We saw him yesterday, and he really wasn't very impressive. A couple balls got by him going to the left. He didn't feel one to the right, but he had a cyst taken off his uh, side up around the rib area a couple of days ago, and he's had about a dozen stitches, so he is not at his best. And I think he could have made a better play on that one, too. I, I think yesterday a couple of balls, as you said, Jack, that he 
miss that ordinarily Espinosa sucks up, and that was another ball that he could have fielded, planted, and thrown out, but because of that injury to his side, he was unable to. Here's Doug Jennings. He's playing where Ricky Henderson ordinarily performs in left field. Lansford has stolen 13 bases. There he goes. Hit and run. We told you about this team. They do it all the time. They don't sit around. First and third, nobody up. See, think about the logic of putting on the hit and run the first pitch. Three straight balls to Lansford, and then a strike, and Carney hit the 3-1 pitch, and now on the first pitch, Witt really trying to throw a strike, not trying to fall behind, and that's one of the responsibilities for a manager to get a good pitch for a hitter to hit on a hit and run count, and Jennings took advantage of it. First to third, nobody out. That's his first hit ever against Mike Witt for Jennings. He had been 0 for 4. There's Tony Larissa. His team is off and running. 172 games. They beat the Yankees eight times and eight tries, and there's Stump Merrill hoping for a triple play. The batter is Dave Henderson. And ball one. If you're hoping for a triple play in the first inning, you're struggling. The Yankees aren't struggling for the most part under Stump Merrill. They're 12 and 6 in their last 18 decisions. But they have been struggling against the Athletics. Dave Henderson, Ian McGuire are their big hitters in the lineup today with the others out. And a foul goes out of play. One ball, one strike. There is a lot of foul territory here in the Oakland Coliseum, and it costs these batters a lot of at-bats. Fielders can chase it for a long time. We mentioned the dimensions. Rather normal, the ball doesn't carry him, but the, but the also, that foul territory, just one more reason for a lot of a lot of times you get a, a, a pitch that you put in play that in other ballparks would be back in the seats. First and third and nobody out. The Thompson ball, that goes through. It's one to nothing, and the lead runner stops at second. Draws back in. Anderson got one up the middle, and it's one nothing. How do you stop this open team? Well, they can beat you a lot of ways. We mentioned that Conseco and Ricky Henderson are out of the lineup. Yesterday, they had 10 runs, 16 hits. The first three hitters this afternoon with three hits in a row. The infield back in double play depth, and Jennings forced to stop at second base. You see the look on the pitcher's face. Oh, no, that went through. You know those ground balls, they could be right at an infielder just as easy as they went up the middle. But that's pitching luck for you. Well, maybe the next guy will hit a line drive that will be caught. Mark McGuire hitting 219 with 28 home runs. And they play him deep. And straight away. Think he'll be bunting, Tim? <laughs> Side edge. McGuire only two home runs from having 30 plus home runs over the last four years. He had 49 home runs his rookie season in 87. He's hit well against Witt, as you can see. And he's fourth in the league and runs batted in. Good stop by the catcher, Garen, but a poor throw as he tried to pick him up. He's got the input. Yeah, well, usually if you make a good play on a ball in the dirt, you're not going to throw well because you can't come up with the seams. But that was a terrific play by Bob Guerin. The breaking ball in the dirt. And Guerin looked like a first baseman fielding that ball. Here it is one more time. Sharp breaking curve ball from Witt. And by the time Guerin made the throw, it was errant to Sachs. One ball, one strike. McGuire ball two. The Yanks went down in order. And the first three A's have hit safely. was hit by a pitch here yesterday and got his hander up a bit. Well, he took a good pitch that time. I really wish he had that one. Well, I, I, I think the athletics are really thinking that they've seen Mike Witt before, but he usually throws a lot of breaking balls. As we said, he's not throwing as many breaking balls now 
because of the elbow problems that he's had. Only one start since June 6th. Wick could certainly use the strikeout or the double play. It's a 2-2 count, first and second, and nobody out. And it just missed, three and two. And we'll see if Louisa starts the runners. It is Doug Jennings at second and Dave Henderson over at first. And three and two on McGuire. Again, no home runs yesterday, and now a fastball on the 3-2 pitch and a home run to the opposite field by Mark McGuire. Mike saying, oh, no. And now the next batter is Ron Hesse, and he hits a foul. I'll tell you how unusual that home run was. Not that it was unusual that McGuire hit the homer, but that he hit it to right field. Coming into this game, McGuire was 8 for 92 when he hit the ball to the right side of the outfield. 0 87, 8 for 92, and now he pumps one out the other way. Everything is going in favor of the Athletics. And a quick two strike count on the batter, Ron Hesse. The score 4 to nothing in the first. The Yankees played them tough to the middle portion of the game yesterday. Then it broke open. And of course the manager doesn't want to take the pitcher out in the first inning or the second inning or the third inning. Outside two and two. Stump Merrill probably thinking how long is it going to be before I have a club like the A's. Lansford single, Jennings single, Henderson single home run, and McGuire hit the homer. Maybe we'll get an out here. That's the first out in the first inning. Good play by Espinosa. That's a little better, says Stump. We have a busy day of baseball, and the Reds are leading San Francisco 5-3 to three in the fourth. The Expos are still in the picture in the National League East. Six and a half out and leading. And the Cardinals putting a hurt on the Pirates again today in the seventh inning behind Tewksbury. The Dodgers are still in the picture in the West, and they're ahead this afternoon. Here's ball one to Felix Jose. In the National League East, the Cardinals and the Cubs are playing very well since the All-Star game. The Cubs visiting New York today. 1-1 one, one ball game. That one is on the corner. And a ball and a strike to Jose. Unfortunately for the Cubs and the Cardinals, just a bit late to start after the All-Star break, being 13, 11 games back. A late swing, a half swing, and a foul. One and two. Mark Grace hit a home run today for the Cubs. Goodyear Blimp is still with us, as it was yesterday and at the football game that you saw on CBS last night where the Raiders beat the 49ers. One-two pitch and a strikeout for Witt. And it is fastball, fastball, fastball today, Tim. One after the other. I believe this was a breaking ball. It's almost like Witt is coddling that breaking ball and not throwing it. And there again, we talking to Mike before the game, and he said the elbow is just not completely healed, and it's really been painful when he throws the breaking ball. It's been a painful first inning for the Yankees who trail four to nothing here in the first. Jerry Steinbach is up. He's the DH. Batting 241. Jose Conseco could pinch hit today. He has a bad back and he has a sciatic nerve problem. That's why you'll see him standing up 
most of the time during the day. Foul back, good swing by Steinbach, one and one. And that sciatic nerve injury, it's tough to sit down. Steinbach has had the pleasure of being on American League All-Star team. The more you talk to him, the more you realize how things revolve around him with this Oakland team. He is one of the leaders on this club, no question about it, from Ulm, Minnesota. Two balls and a strike to count, a long first inning for the Yankee pitcher. Mike Witt. Four runs on four hits. Two and two. I said Ulm, it's New Ulm. U-L-M, New Ulm, Minnesota. We don't want to get the folks in New Ulm all up in arms. No, the three of them will get mad at you. Two and two to count. And a fly ball is how it's going to be caught by Azokar. Four runs, four hits, one inning, four nothing in favor of the Yankees. See how Bob Welch handles prosperity. Mel Hall leads off second inning. And he got a breaking ball in there for a strike as the A's lead four to nothing over the Yanks. Mel's batting 266 playing right field. And time is called. You could hear the umpire. Hold on, Bob. He was yelling out to Welch. It's funny how Welch works. He works very quickly from the windup. Look at those numbers, 15, 17, twice, and 18 this year. What a drive by Hall, but it's curving and going. Foul uh, ball, and that's strike two. Who the heck out of that thing? I'll tell you why it was a tough uh, call for Derwood Merrill down the first baseline. The ball was over the screen. Over the top of the screen. Yeah. Yeah, that screen is, is there. So, so an umpire. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh come on. <laughs> 99 career home I'm, runs, and he went by Tim McCarter <laughs> earlier this month. I'm sure Mel was excited about that number. <laughs> that ball is hit to third. Lansford, top play. Beautiful. <laughs> Great play by Lansford, playing off the line with a left-handed batter up there. You know what the players would be saying now after that that near home run down the right field line, and now this cue shot down the left field line, the players would say, same guys hit them both. Fine play by Carney Lansford. Look at him, he's in foul territory when he throws this ball. He's going one way and throwing back across his body. Good play by Lansford. He takes care of that a hot corner. Up in a unique fashion down there at third base as each pitch is made. This one coming into Kevin Moss. And a strike. 13 home runs for the sensational rookie of the Yankees. And 110 at bats faster than anybody else in Major League history. And he homered here yesterday. He takes strike two from Bob Welch, who's not fooling around with him. learned a lot from Cleet Boyer who was a coach here for the athletics and Cleet taught him among many things how to get ready for ground balls it's very unique and ball one he's right down on the deck with that glove and then at the same time starting in with a pitch one ball two strikes the Indians having a good day today leading the Tigers the twins over Toronto that hurts the Blue Jays White Sox have a rain delay just missed two and two. Welch was a good pitcher with the Dodgers when he came to the athletics. Dave Duncan, the pitching coach, taught him that split finger fastball. And that was it. That was it, and it gets the strikeout for Welch. His first, he's retired five in a row. Greg Gumbel is with us in New York City. 
Well, Jack, you just saw the score. Take a look at Mike Harkey of the Cubs with a bases loaded single to right off 15 game winner Frank Viola of the Mets. The Cubs scored four times in the second and lead the Mets 5-1. to one. Meanwhile, the Pirates trail St. Louis 4-0 in the eighth. Pirates started a half game back. Let's go back, Jack. And the count is ball one to Matt Noakes, a designated hitter. Greg Gumbel told you about Harkey, the Cub pitcher getting a hit. That's not an accident. He's a good hitter for a pitcher. He's a big fella at 6-5. And he helps himself. Noakes tries to be the first Yank to get on base here. Yankees trailing four to nothing in the second, and Bob Welch has set down five in a row. Now ball three. Noakes used to wear the Tiger uniform. Came to the Yankees June 4th for Lance McCullers and Clay Parker, two pitchers. Strike. You see these Yankee batters wearing that number one on their left sleeve. And that's a tribute to Billy Martin. That's ball four, and Noakes gets a walk with two out. Interestingly, the Yankees, the first team in Major League Baseball to wear numbers back in 1929. And they're the only team in baseball now not to have the names on their back of their road uniforms. I wonder why they're stubborn about that, do you know? Tradition? I imagine. Like, like pinstripes, I would think. Here's Jim Leritz. He's one of the good young players. And on at first is Noakes with two out being held by McGuire. Leritz batting 270. Yesterday I made a remark about this batter. He's playing third base today. Saying he was a catcher and a good catcher, but didn't want to catch. And what did he tell you today, Tim? He told me today that up to this year, he was primarily a catcher. As a matter of fact, the Yankees playing him at third base. He played third base in the outfield for Columbus. This proves another point that catchers are great athletes. <laughs> <laughs> they can play anywhere. But this fellow, uh, including center field. This fellow's versatility is uh, well regarded by the Yanks. He's a pretty good hitter. With two out. That ball missed, and the count is two and one. A walk to Noakes. New York looking for their first hit. They trail four nothing. Surprise, McGuire's holding him on. He's not going anywhere. That is going to be in the right field and chased by Jose in the bullpen, and nothing good. Two and two. Jose can play all three outfield positions for Oakland. Bob Welch, the winningest pitcher in the major leagues and in the American League. Three more than Dave Steve and Chuck Finley, California. Roger Clemens was 16 and Dave Stewart was 16 again. I'll tell you, Stewart, 87, 88, 89, won 20 plus games. He has 16 wins again this year. And again, there's a chance that he may not be the Cy Young Award winner. Because of this fellow, Bob Welch, right. three and two, runner going, foul out of play. With two out here in the second. Nothing Oakland. Here she just turned the set on. A base hit by Lansford. Base hit by Jennings. RBI single by Dave Henderson. And a three run homer by Mark McGuire. Welch doesn't want to walk another here. Runner going. Out of play again. 48,000 plus. Nice sunny day. Took a little while for the fog to burn off here in the Bay Area this morning, but it's wonderful now. Nice place to play, Tim. Ideal. Gorgeous day. Runner going again, and another foul out of play. This playing field, by the way, is well manicured, and a lot of the players on both teams say it's the best field in which to play in the American League. 
13th sellout of the year for the Athletics. They went over two million in Friday night's game. Ball four. So Welch opens the door a little bit. Puts two on with walks. Nopes down to second. Larry it's at first and Larusa makes a little note of that. Have to talk to him. Later. Well, two walks with a four-run lead. I would imagine that is the note that. That Tony was writing down. Bob Welch obviously upset. When you have a four-run lead, you really want the opposition to earn getting on base. Maybe he tried to be too cute with a pitch on the corner. Trying to get him out inside. This is Bob Garrett. He took a home run swing. Strike one. He has hit seven home runs. Frequently, you'll see the batter turn around, say something to the umpire, like, was, was that a strike? Was it in the strike zone? That's out of the strike zone. One and one. Two on, two out for the Yankees. They scored only one run yesterday. They missed some early opportunities. Put the first two on base twice. Outside to Garrett. This is one of the differences in the American and National League. Here's the number eight hitter. And you say, well, it won't matter if he walks it because the pitcher's up next. But instead, it's going to be Espinosa coming up. So that's the difference in this DH business. Let's see how Welch comes after Garen. There's Espinosa. Two balls and a strike. Two on, two out. Another big swing. Two and two. He cut at the first pitch, and this pitch again out of the strike zone up. Bob wanted to put the Yankees one run down with those swings. Yeah, that would have been ball three. Now it's two and two. And a line drive puts the Yankees on the board. The play will go into third base, and it's four to one. He stayed back very well. Looked like Welch took a little bit off that pitch, and Garen singled the run home. breaking ball after those two wild swings up the breaking ball off the plate away and Garen delivers with the first base hit for the Yankees in the game a little slider away hits it off the end of the bat drops it right in front of Jennings in left field a diving Weiss can't get to it but there again the two walks really put Welch into trouble not the base hit that's what happens to some pitchers. They get the lead, four to nothing. They lose their concentration a little bit. Now the Yankees are on the board, trailing four to one. A big lift for them today if they can come back and win this one. And a foul by Espinosa, who's batting 228. Now at second, we have Jim Leyritz and Bob Guerin, the runner at first. And the batter is Espinosa. strike they play this fellow to hit to the opposite field Henderson into right center Felix Jose near the line and they're pitching in that way also ball two and this crowd's getting a little restless yeah I think uh, more than the depth or certainly as much as the the windage of the outfielders is the depth of Jose in right field. He's playing a shallow opposite field, knowing Espinosa has no power the other way. That is low, and that's three and one. Lots of advice coming from the stands out to the pitcher. Three and one the count. And a foul out of play. The way he was going, it's three and two, and now the runners will go with the pitch. Oakland four runs on four hits. The Yankees one run on one hit. Later it's relieved from second, and Garen away from first. Espinosa chased a high fastball and struck out. The Yankees score one, and they lead two, and they trail four to one.
That one run with Mike Witt might help him, Tim, and give him the idea his teammates can come back for him. And Bob Welch is probably kicking himself right now for walking two with two outs, and that eventually led to the la to the Yankee run. And the batter is going to be Walt Weiss to lead it off. The shortstop, he's hitting 274. And ball one. I mentioned yesterday, the more you talk to baseball people about this fellow, the more highly regarded you realize he is by a lot of people. Some say he's as good as anybody. Anybody now or previously. Add to that is offensive performance. 274 average and 30 RBIs. Seven stolen bases. He's a good piece of property. Gets one to the other shortstop. Into the dirt. A good play by Moss. Greg Gumbel has more for us in New York. Well, Jack, in the East, Toronto is trying to catch Boston. Minnesota not doing them any favors today. Gene Larkin's base hit up the middle caps a three-run third inning. They added two more in the uh, third, and now it is a 5-0. Minnesota lead over Toronto in the fourth, Jack. Okay, Greg, and Boston started the day two games ahead of Toronto. Boston, by the way, comes in here, so they'll have to tackle the A's next. Start a three-game series tomorrow night, and, and once again, the ninth hitter in the American League, the ex-captain of the Yankees, Willie Randolph. You mentioned the designated hitter rule. That's not the only difference in the regulations between the National League and the American League. You know the scout in the press box or the coach in the press box with those electronic devices? They go down to the dugout. Well, you can't do that in the American League. There is no eye in the sky in the American League. The meetings at the pitcher's mound can only consist of a pitcher, catcher, one infielder, and a coach or a manager. Only four on the mound. In the, in the National League, you can invite fans on the mound if you want. Really? <laughs> no, but there's no limit to the number of infielders, manager, catcher on the pitcher's mound. And then, of course, the biggest difference, the designated hitter rule. 3-1 pitches, ball four. That's the first walk given up by Mike Witt. It goes to Willie Randolph. And we come around to the top of the order. Indians still leading the Tigers, 9-2 in the seventh inning. And as Greg told you a while ago, 5-0 Twins in the fourth. Still a rain delay at Chicago. And the Royals beating Milwaukee 7-1 in the fourth. This batter, Lansford, started it all on the first with a base hit. And eventually scored. One on, one out. And a while to play. I'm sure with the rain delay in Chicago, none of the White Sox players are tuning us in today no. to see how the athletics are doing. White Sox entered today's action in the American League West, four and a half games behind the Oakland Athletics and have just had a terrific season so far. One on, one out. Well, the A's ran earlier. Let's see if they do it again. Nice play by Garen again. Chicago and the A's will meet a few more times before it's over. In late August and late September, the last time the White Sox were here in Oakland, they swept the Oakland Athletics after losing three or four to them the weekend before at Comiskey Park. It's too early to say that'll be a do or die series, but they certainly will be important. The runner is leaning, but not going. And it's a two for two for Lansford. He shot that one past Leritz. Late reaction by Leritz also. I had and, the same impression. Yeah, at a lot of times in a with the sparkling sun that's here in Oakland, a lot of times an infielder, the ball will get lost in those white shirts, and that's what appeared to happen to Leyritz on this ball. It's only about a yard from him, hit very well, but Leyritz just didn't react well. He's almost diving from a flat-footed stance. And that brings out the pitching coach, Billy Connors, to talk with Mike Witt. Jeff Robinson down in the bullpen. As the Yankees are forced to warm up a pitcher here as early as the second inning. Billy 
Billy Connors telling us before the game on Friday about Mike Witt and throwing a lot of fastballs. Well, I think, uh, Timmy, when I saw him last year, I didn't see the, the, the velocity of the of the fastball that I had seen previously. I think he, he was more of a breaking ball, too many breaking balls, where he, he got to the point where it took away from his fastball. And when he came over to us, the one thing I said to him is that you have an excellent fastball and we can even get it better, but I want you to go more with your fastball and then not throw as many curveballs. When you do throw a curveball, it'll be your, uh, an excellent curveball because we all know Mike Witt's got one of the best curveballs in baseball. Batter is Doug Jennings. He got a base hit his first time up on a hit and run. Saw that curveball from Witt getting the strikeout of Felix Jose, but for the most part, it's been power pitching here today by the right handed. Willie Randolph got back. He's the runner at second. And Lansford across the way at first base. Two on, one out. Runners are going. Fouled it out of play, and he almost nailed the on-deck hitter, Dave Henderson. So they're not standing around with a 4-1 lead. I'll tell you, with a favorable count, I've always loved that first and second hit and run. As you look at Dave Henderson, Dave's all right. A favorable count, meaning when the hitter is ahead of the pitcher. Willie Randolph at second base and Lansford at first. They're pretty fast runners, but that's not really the gauge by which you decide to hit and run. It's really the hitter, whether he can make enough contact to put the ball in play. Jumps are not necessary on hit and run plays. So the speed of the runner, for the most part, is not important. And Jennings steps out and has a look at the third base coach again. I think we're seeing more managers in baseball be a little bit more adventurous with runners at first and second. Over the last three years, you can see that changing a bit. They're sending a lot more of the runners and putting the hit and run in effect. One and one to the batter. And a foul ball makes it one and two. Souvenir. Renee Lachman is the third base coach. Renee's brother, Marcel, the pitching coach for the California Angels. Jennings filling in in left field where Ricky Henderson ordinarily plays. Willie Randolph. With Lansford at first. Wick got him. That's his second strikeout. And both have come on breaking balls. Another one to Rob Jennings. You can really see that is not the vintage curveball that you're used to seeing from Mike Witt. And you can tell he's he's really nursing the breaking ball up to the plate, not snapping it off as he often does. But again, the bad elbow is causing that. They put it in a good spot, however, and he got the strikeout. So they're two on, two out for Dave Henderson. Henderson. Drove in a run with a single in the first, and Garen has been bouncing around behind the plate, doing well. Ball one. Ninth inning, getting late. Cardinals 17 hits and leading six to nothing, and the Dodgers winning, trying to stay in this thing. Los Angeles started the day only seven behind Cincinnati. That's ball two. Two on, two out. If he loses Dave Henderson, he'll have to pitch to McGuire. Two and all oh the count. Oh, he hit that ball hard. Hold it away, foul. Two and one. This Henderson is a pumper. He was batting second yesterday. I said, "You good number two hitter?" He said, "Are you kidding?" <laughs> he said, that's the furthest thing from my mind is advancing runners. 19 home runs proves that point. I'd like to advance them home, that's all. Two and one. Two and two. Oakland lead.
leading four to one here in the second. They about hit the Yanks five to one. Anyone to walk? We have two men on base. Here we go. Three and two, two out. Try to bait him with a high fastball, and Henderson wouldn't bite. Almost forced to throw the fastball again now. Because if you miss with the curve, McGuire's going to be hitting with the bases loaded. We shall see. The runners will go. There they move. And a foul. It stays 3 2. The deeper in the count that a hitter goes, and the more pitches he sees, obviously the chances of him getting a hit go dramatically up. Your timing's better. He has seen six straight fastballs. And he's had a good cut every time he has swung the bat. The 2-0 fastball, the 2-1 he just missed, and he just missed that 3-2 fastball. Runners are on the move once more. And the bases are loaded to the ball. It's the second walk. And we're going to have a new pitcher. McGuire, who hit a three-run homer in the first, won't get a chance to bat against Mike Witt with the bases loaded here in the second. Snuff Merrill out of the dugout, and it's going to be Jeff Robinson out of the bullpen for New York. Base and loaded, two out. This relief break is sponsored by Rolay. Tim McCarver used the word earlier vintage. It was not vintage Mike Witt today. He didn't get through two innings and he leaves the bases loaded for Jeff Robinson to pick up. Base and loaded two out and Mark McGuire with a three run homer in the first at the plate. That ball moved down the way from McGuire. Strike one. That's his money pitch. That sinker. He also throws a slider, a split finger fastball. Coming to the Yankees in the Don Slot trade, a young right-hander, Willie Smith, came over with Jeff. One and one. In the first inning, with runners on first and second, a three-two pitch and Mark McGuire a rare home run the other way. He crushed it. They were just trying to hit behind the runners. Base hit loaded. Here's one that should end the inning. Force out to Sachs, and Oakland fails to score. They leave three. We've played two, and the A's lead it four to one. The Yankees have scored one. They've left two, and it's the top of the order. Roberto Kelly in ball one from Bob Welsh, who's walked a couple, and fan two. The Yanks have only one hit. This fellow applied to right his first time, and that hard breaking ball is on the corner. Sometimes they call it a breaking ball. Sometimes they cut the fastball, and you can't really tell the difference. That ball is headed for Felix Jose. One out. Greg Gumbel's having a busy afternoon in New York. Well, Jack, Bob Tewksbury, the former Yankee, his afternoon is over. At Pittsburgh, he puts the cap on a six-hit complete game shutout to run his record to 7-3, and three, and the Cardinals are now eight wins and 11 starts under new manager Joe Torre, Jack. And that's four wins in a row for the Cardinals, and they hurt the Pirates. And a good strike from Welch to Steve Sachs, who is mired in a slump. Back to the pitcher his first time. Welsh can hit a little wild streak once in a while, Tim. Yeah, he had uh, he walked six in a game June 15th against the White Sox this year. That's what but they're happened. they're helping him out a lot. You saw to end the the second inning, Espinosa going for a high fastball. We saw Garen going for a high fastballs, and now right here, the high fastball. No way to hit that one on two. And right at it. That's another thing that happens when you're in the slump. You finally hit the ball good. He hit it right at the second baseman, Willie Randolph. Now Sachs carries the bat back. Yeah, if you're a, if you're any kind of hitter, you have a tough time accepting that argument that things even out. <laughs> <laughs> the broken bat hits 
even out with the balls hit good right at guys. Why is it Hassey catches Welch every time? Any particular reason? Well, I think he's successful uh, catching Welch, and that's the, the biggest reason. He's caught Welch every start this year. Two out in the inning. Three in a row set down by Welch. And that ball is popped up foul for Lansford. Glass is down. And another one, two, three inning for the Yankees. We'll return to the Oakland Coliseum after this word from your local station. This picture from the Goodyear Blimp, Columbia, based in Carson, California. Charles Russell, the pilot, he's from Downey, California. And here we go into the bottom of the third, and Ron Hassey breaks his bat and hits it to Moss. And he is 0 for 2. And Jeff Robinson in relief has taken care of the two batters he has faced. There's Ron Hassey. He is the caddy, as they call him, for Bob Welch. As Tim McCarver used to be for that left-hander in Philadelphia. Well, I resent the word caddy. <laughs> <laughs> they get paid pretty. I was not a caddy for Steve Carlton. I caught Steve Carlton the last four years of my career. I'm sorry. You have rankled me. Here's a line drive into right for Mel Hall. Nice play. Two out. <laughs> two pitches, two outs right here. This split finger fastball to Jose is rifled to Hall in right field. I'll tell you, you know, when I went back to the Phillies, Jack, uh, Steve Carlton wasn't throwing his slider, and the only thing I did differently with Steve was to, uh, to call for his slider. I went around shaking hands with people with three fingers down for about four years. That was the sign for the slider. He had a dandy, and he ate up those right-handed batters. Here's ball one to Steinbach. Hit the ball well, but flat out to left his first time. There's a good strike from Jeff Robinson. The pitching coach of the A's, keeping a good eye on Bob Welch today, is Dave Duncan. Big breaking ball from Robinson. One and two. I don't think any catcher who is a pitching coach has had as much influence on a pitching staff as Dave Duncan has on the Oakland staff. He's taught Dave Stewart and Bob Welch the split finger fastball. Mike Moore, Gene Nelson, split finger fastball. Now here you've got a catcher who was never a pitcher teaching a pitching staff a new pitch because he realized early the success of that pitch and how effective it was. Three and two to Steinbach. I can't help myself any longer. I saw that Goodyear blimp and it reminded me of what a caterpillar said when it saw its first butterfly. What? You'll never get me up in one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> there are two out here in the bottom of the third and no foul ball. Keeps it three and two. You're not a blimp uh, aficionado. You like the pictures, you just don't want to pilot it, right? <laughs> Take a ride in one of those. There's the picture they send down. Steinbach has five home runs. Through the hole and a base hit. The sixth of the day for the Oakland team. And they have had men on base in each inning. That's the first hit against Jeff Robinson. Steinbach, a good low ball hitter, and this ball down and in. He remembers the low ball that he hit off Rick Russell in game two of last year's World Series. A series, of course, swept by the Oakland Athletics. Just absolutely dominated a good giant ball club. And the first baseman plays behind Steinbach, and Walt Weiss takes ball one. He grounded to short his first time. Suffering New York. Good play by Robinson. Oakland has left four. And they lead four to one. Ball and Moss and Noakes coming up. Sago better get back in the lineup. He's putting on a little weight sitting around. <laughs> no, that's, that's not him. You know, facially. <laughs> That fella there who's wearing Conseco's one of the shirts they sell here. It looks like Fernando Valenzuela. 
And Al Hall hits the first pitch into center for Henderson, and there's one out. But I'll tell you, the real Canseco visiting clubs just stop to see him hit. You know, you might think that's a good thing to see all the young hitters. There's Roberto Kelly. This was Friday before the game, standing around the cage watching a guy hit. But you know what they're doing? They're admiring him. And I'm not too sure admiration is called for when you're trying to beat the opposition. As a matter of fact, Stump Merrill said something to that effect this morning in the San Francisco Examiner. Here's a breaking ball strike to Kevin Moss. He, he struck out his first time. Stump was quoted as saying that you've got to guard against giving the opposition too much credit. And I agree with that. Now the count one and one. Stump Merrill replacing Bucky Den in Boston on D-Day, June 6th. How about that in Boston where Bucky Den hit that famous home run after the 78 season? ball and he hit it to the opposite field one and two. We mentioned Kevin Moss has hit the most with 13 home runs or the fastest to get to 13 home runs and 110 at bats. Also the fastest to get to 10 home runs, 12 home runs, 13 home runs. Wally Berger the fastest to get to 14 back in 1930 when he had 38 home runs. See where that takes him as he chases Mark McGuire, who hit 20 home runs and 178 at bats. And then you see Rudy York, Ken Phelps, Babe Ruth, and how rapidly they get to those plateaus. Babe Ruth was interesting. It took him over 1,100 at bats to reach the first 50, but then he hit 100 in his next 900 at bats, or right around there. The big thing about Moss is he hits that ball out in front. He has very quick hands. He's batting with one out. Base is empty. His club trailing 4-1. He's got a Yankee Stadium swing. That could be lethal on the road. And he struck out against the Welsh breaking ball. That's the third strikeout for the Oakland pitcher. What is a Yankee Stadium swing? Well, it's a swing tailored to pull the ball. Of course, Kevin Moss, that's not to say every time he makes an out on the road that he's going to be trying to pull the ball. But there are a lot of Yankee hitters over the years that have hit much better, left-handed hitters in particular, that have hit much better at Yankee Stadium because it's only 310 down the right field line. Matt Noakes struck out his first time. That's one of the reasons the Yankees got Matt Noakes, as a matter of fact. This pitcher has retired six in a row. Cubs pouring it out of the Mets, seven one in the fifth. Reds leading late, eighth inning, six three over the Giants. Trying to get back five and a half ahead of San Francisco, and the Cardinals beat the Pirates six to nothing. Dodgers in the chase, they lead seven two late in the game, eighth inning. In that Cincinnati game, Hal Morris, another good day, two for two, two RBIs, an ex-Yankee. And we'll see Hal Morris next week against the Pittsburgh Pirates next Saturday. Over in Cincinnati, they're chirping about that slide of Will Clark last night, yeah. which, which upset Barry Larkin. It created some ill feeling between the two clubs. The count is three and one on Noakes with two out. Welch has already walked two. And Noakes chased a high fastball. I think it was out of the strike zone. Three and two. in a row set down by Welch who leads four to one. Can't see the catcher. That's the third walk by Welch. And has him talking to himself a bit. Wondering why his pitcher would do something like that with two out and three run lead. Welch has never won as many games as he's already won this year. Never won 20 games. He's just a much more complete pitcher with the Oakland Athletics than he was with the Dodgers, primarily because of that split finger fastball. He almost screwed himself into the ground as the umpire called time. Previously, his high was 17 victories. He's 18 and 4 now. And a 
fly ball for the right fielder Felix Jose. Now the Yankees have left three out of the fourth. They trail four to one and Willie Randolph leads it off for Oakland. We're at the Coliseum here in Oakland where the A's chase the starter Mike Witt in the first with four runs. They lead four to one in the bottom of the fourth and it's strike one to Willie Randolph from Jeff Robinson. Robinson has allowed one base hit. Her ball didn't get down one and one. No call by the umpire two balls and a strike. Randolph drew a walk his first time. Time Yankee record for games played at second base for this man. And he hits one on one hop to Leyritz. And there's one up. Last night it was San Francisco at Cincinnati. Kevin Mitchell at the plate. Will Clark running from first. And watch what happens to Barry Larkin, the shortstop. Mariano Duncan feels this ball over second base. He gives Larkin the little lob. And watch Clark right there. The late slide, and he went into the left leg of Barry Larkin. Larkin being toppled down on top of Clark, and the Reds did not like that at all. It was a late slide by by Will Clark. I'll tell you, when we were looking at that before the ball game, Jack, I thought that was a pretty clean slide. But the more I think about it, because it was late and because he hit the leg first instead of the ground, I'm not too sure. I have seen Will Clark do that before. He started a rumble in St. Louis when he nailed Jose Okendo at second base. He's a hard, tough player, and he realizes what the consequences might be, and he's willing to play in that fashion. Larkin has a strained left knee, but certainly the whole Cincinnati Red Ball Club, coaches included, took exception to that to that slide primarily because it hit the leg first instead of usually when you slide you cushion it you can take a guy out by hitting the dirt first and then coming up and hitting the leg it was a straight in slide but he hit the leg of Barry Larkin first and I think why that's why the Reds are angry about that slide the Reds are leading by four and a half and winning their game today and Lansford is finally retired by the Yanks He's two for three. What does Greg Gumbel have in store for us? Well, Jack, as you say, the Reds are looking to stretch their lead to five and a half. Chris Sabo with a two-out single here in the seventh brings home run number six. But the Giants have knocked out one nasty boy, Rob Dibble. But another has come on in Randy Myers at 6-4 Reds in the eighth. 6-4 Cincinnati in the eighth. Two men gone here against Jeff Robinson and ball one high. This might be the final inning of work for Robinson in relief of Mike Whit. That's up high again, ball two. Randolph grounded out. Lansford struck out. We're in the bottom of the fourth, four to one, Oakland. And the batter is Jennings, and he hits a foul out of play. Eric. Punk, a former member of the Oakland team, is warming up in the New York bullpen. Jennings, one for two. Batting 200. Over but low, and it's three and one. I think Jeff Robinson has better stuff than to be a middle reliever in the American League. He's two and one as a starter this year, one and five in relief. I think he should be starting for the Yankees. That ball slices foul, making it three and two. When you have quality pitches like he has, a good sinking fastball, the split finger, a fair breaking ball, but he throws strikes, and that, that I thought was one of the reasons they obtained him from the Pittsburgh Pirates to start. And he started off the season in the bullpen. He's been a starter, a closer, a middle relief man. He struck him out as Jennings was caught looking. That's the second strikeout for Robinson. Now we played four innings, four to one, Athletics. CBS Sports presents Major League Baseball. 
Today's game is brought to you by General Motors. GM is putting quality on the road. Extra strength roll aids with 1,000 milligrams of fast relief. And by Reebok, it's time to play. We are at the Oakland Coliseum. Tim McCarver, Jack Buck with you. Fifth inning, Jeff Robinson has capped the Yankees in the game. And New York sends up Bob Guerin, who had an RBI single in the second against Bob Wills. And he took a good fastball strike. Guerin prefers left-handed pitching. Outside one and one. We mentioned that the Yankees have lost eight straight to the Athletics this year. This is their ninth game. It's the Athletics eight. No, it's not that they beat them. It's how they have beat them. They have just dominated the Yankees this season. The Yankees have scored six runs, this being their ninth game against Oakland. Stump Merrill, when he was managing in the minor leagues, he used to go back home to Maine and coach a high school football team. It's quite a mixture. It makes for a busy year. Up and into Garen, two and two. So much consistency on this Oakland pitching staff. They have used only five starters all season long. Five. Others get up to 10 or 12 that they have to pitch. Mm -hmm. Half swing, he held up. I think. How about it, Derwood? No, I don't think so. No, let me think about it. No? Uh -uh. He's from Hooks, Texas, Derwood Merrill. Hooks, Texas? Well, this is a fastball. <laughs> and it looks like Garen held up. Hooks, Texas. 3 2 pitch, got him. That's a fourth strikeout for Welch. We mentioned that Oakland has used only five starters, and Jack, you're exactly right. Twelve starters for the Giants. Dave Stewart with 26, 25 each for Mike Moore and Bob Welch. Scott Sanderson with 24. Kurt Young with 15. The only other team to do that in the last 86 years, the 1966 Los Angeles Dodgers. Koufax, Drysdale, Osteen, Don Sutton's first year, and Joe Moeller. A pretty good pitching staff also. Uh -huh. The last American League team to use five starters all season long, the Boston Pilgrims in 1904. The Pilgrims. The Pilgrims. Yeah. Huh. Wow. I think those pitchers used to cut the ball on their shoe buckles for the Pilgrims. For the Pilgrims, huh? Yeah. There is one out. It's one ball, two strikes to count to Espinoza. Struck out his first time and fouls one this time. The Yankees have only one hit. That was the base hit by Guerin with two out in the second that drove home the run. Indians win 9 5 over Detroit. Bouncing ball, Weiss. Throws on the move. Two out. Well, you can get a lot on that ball. He seldom settles down and plants his feet. That's right. He doesn't have as strong an arm as a lot of shortstops, but but watch how he throws on the run. You'll see Walt, Walt Weiss throw much the same as the shortstop for the Giants across the bay, Jose Uribe. He does a lot of that throwing on the run. There are two on and around at the top of the order, and Roberto Kelly hits a foul. Twice he's fly to right. Only one hit for New York. How many baseball players hail from the home country of this batter? Kelly. And I'm on. Pitch inside, two and one. Still raining in the Windy City. Ninth inning, Kansas City has a good lead over the Brewers. And the Orioles alive in the pennant picture, leading early in the second inning. Kelly drops a base hit to right. Second hit for New York. Kelly has stolen 25 bases. Bob Welch allows his second hit. Good relief work by Jeff Robinson. He got that last out in the second inning with the bases loaded and kept it as is, four to one. 
result, the Yanks still have a chance here. Two out, and then the hit, and here's Sacks over two. Hit the ball well one time and lined out. And he pops it foul. Lots of room. There's McGuire. Now they're left for New York. They have stranded four, and they trail by three. Well, our friend Pat O'Brien made his debut with overtime last Friday night, and he's coming up again next week at 11.30 Eastern Time. George Foreman, Terry Bradshaw, and M.C. Hammer. You know the rapper M.C. Hammer? Interesting story. He was discovered in the parking lot right outside of the Coliseum here in Oakland by Charlie Finley. Charlie Finley asked him if he wanted to be a bat boy. He became a bat boy. And later on, he was financed in the music business by two Oakland athletics, Dwayne Murphy and Mike Davis. And here he is, the hottest thing on the market, MC Hammer. And Danny Sullivan, the race car driver, will join Pat O'Brien Friday night. Eric Plunk checks in as the pitcher, and Henderson hits one to the center fielder, Roberto Kelly. One out here in the Oakland fifth. I talked to Henderson. It's a small ballpark by dimensions, but he says it's tough to hit it out of here. Well, of course not. Uh, they compare this uh, to the dungeon. I mean, this is a coliseum, and uh, the fog rolls in, and there's dew on the ground, and and the ball doesn't carry. The dimensions look normal, but you hit one out of here, you really hit one. He didn't that time, and he is one for two. Here's McGuire, who's one for two. You know, as we said earlier, the dimensions are not what is impressive, but the ball just doesn't carry, and that makes the feats of McGuire and Conseco and Dave Henderson that much greater. And it's even more so at night, more difficult to hit the ball out of here, they tell us. McGuire popped a three-run homer in the first, and then was retired with a base and loaded in the second. You can see where McGuire's ratio of home runs per at bat much greater on the road than it is here at the Coliseum. Two balls and a strike the count. So he's a road warrior. McGuire fouls one away, two and two. Look at over the last five years, the road home runs. Oh, about a hundred and what 40 160 more road home runs than home run than home home runs Plunk into the game here in the fifth inning and McGuire wouldn't go for the high fastball three and two From the good year blip you check the size of this Coliseum baseball field three and two Breaking ball, and that froze him and struck him out. Once for a strikeout. The crowd didn't like the call. Looked like a pretty good pitch from up here. Three two pitch, McGuire looking for the for the fastball, and he got the slider. Whenever you see a hitter buckle, you got him. Watch the buckle right there. Looking for a fastball, takes the slider. Here comes Ron Hassey. He's 0 for 2. Ball one. Jeff Robinson pitched two and a third. Gave one hit, struck out two, walked none, kept it close here. And Eric Funk has picked up where he has left off. All four open runs against Mike Witt. There's that ball right by him. There goes one more look at that. McGuire taking the 3-2 pitch. A lot of old-time players refer to this as jelly legs. <laughs> That front leg just buckling, and McGuire probably didn't get a good look at the ball. That's why he thought it was a ball. Looking for a fastball, got a slider. Hassey with two out. And that went low. Ball two, two and one. Third base umpire said no. Shulock said he didn't swing. We're in the home half of the fifth, 4 1 Athletics. They got four in the first. None since. Hassey a foul, two and two. With two out. Shirt sleeve crowd. A lot of the gents have the shirts off, soaking up the sunshine today. 
48,000. The sellout weekend here. Funk runs it to three and two. They just don't score runs against Oakland. Ricky Henderson, a spectator these days with a pulled hamstring. We've referred to him as perhaps the best leadoff hitter in the history of baseball. So it has an impact when he's out of the lineup. As he walks. That's the third pass given to the A's to go with their six hits. The first given up by Funk. He had the stolen base and they'll play behind him. Felix Jose has struck out and lined out to right. Having a rather good rookie season, hitting 261 at the start of the day. Inside. many from the Dominican Republic from Santo Domingo ball two Bob Guerin steps out in front of the plate talking to the pitcher about keeping his arm up runner at first two out they got it past him two and one Look at Ricky Henderson as he watches the action. It's a Ricky view. <laughs> Tony LaRusso calls one run rallies by the Oakland Athletics. For the most part, Ricky rallies. Said he can do it all, and boy, can he. Funk gets the ball. A man left for Oakland. They've stranded five. After five, Oakland leads it four to one. They've out hit the Yanks six to two. And the Goodyear blimp shows us this view. And here we go. I'll go with Azokar. And he fouls one. He's 0 for 2 against Bob Welch. From the Goodyear blimp. The Columbia. They don't get a very close look at the baseball game itself. Azokar pulls it to right, but Felix Jose moves to it. And they want batter is 0 for 3. We talked about Azokar's unusual hitting style with that wide stance. He just picks his foot up, his right foot that is, well, and puts it down. And does he ever love to hack? Watch. See, he just puts it up and plants it. He's standing so far away, there's no way to stride. Mal Hall. Ball one. He's 0 for 2. And 107 at bats this year, Azokar has walked. Not once. Zero. Nada. Nada. All is grounded out, flied out, and he hits one to Henderson. Two up. That's what we're talking about. This ball just doesn't carry in this park. Kevin Moss homered yesterday. He was the last player to leave the ballpark, and he signed autographs for the folks. Tell you, he's a good-looking dude, and the heartthrob, or certainly the potential heartthrob of New York City, and a lot of people have compared him to the movie star Rob Lowe, and we thought it might be nice to see how Rob Lowe looked with a Yankee hat on. Yeah. How would he look? How would he look? <laughs> Kevin Moss breaks his bat and gets a hit. Now let's put a Yankee hat right. on Rob Lowe and see what comes of it. I bet he looks just like Kevin Moss. <laughs> well, there. He looks just like Kevin Moss, doesn't he? <laughs> no Moss. I remarked yesterday, I thought he looks a lot like Dale Murphy, long time with Atlanta, now mm -hmm. with the Phillies. Well, these Yankees just haven't scored any runs against Oakland. This is a serious situation. They've scored two runs in the last 33 innings against the A's. 
and they have scored six runs in 79 innings. Can't win like that. Matt Noakes is up. Runner at first, two out. Here's another final. Cincinnati beats San Francisco. Six to four, and Cincinnati leads by five and a half. And they're ahead by six on the lost side. Noakes is struck out and walked. Time called by the umpire. A little note here that the hitter can ask for time. He doesn't call time. He asks for time, and then it's up to the umpire to give it to him. Noakes could make a tighter game of this one with a runner at first, two out. And he has power. He's hit nine home runs. At 32 for the Tigers back in 1987. Buck Showalter is the third base coach. That's out of play. You know a pitcher's throwing hard when the hitter is looking for a fastball, gets it, and fouls it back the other way. 2-0 fastball, Noakes gets it. Now here's a guy who pulls the ball a lot, strong hitter, and he fouls it back the other way. That's when a pitcher's just overpowering a hitter. Two out, Moss singled, and Noakes pops a foul back here to make it two and two. Play players talk about hitters not being able to catch up with the ball, and Noakes hasn't been able to catch up with the fastball the last two swings. Coaching the first base for New York, it's Mike Ferraro. Used to be the third base coach, former American League manager. Two and two with two out. Nope, stays alive. Four to one, Oakland leading here in the sixth inning. The Yanks have three hits, they've been given three walks. Now the runner will go. Let's try to get him with a breaking ball. Welch sitting on 18 wins. Moss is on the move, and a fly ball should be handled. Left fielder Jennings has it. Now New York has left five. We'll return to the Oakland Coliseum after this word from your local station. Kind of their theme here in Oakland. Carney Lansford came up with the thought, stay focused. And some people say it's tough to repeat, but they've already repeated, Tim, and they're trying to do it again. Lansford had that stay focused motto when he showed up in spring training. He had T-shirts made up with stay focused on there. And boy, he is, he is really one of the leaders along with Steinbach. The, the, the athletics have a lot of guys who are leaders. You might say, well, they're leaders because they play well. That's true. But that stay focused had something to do with other than just playing well. Espinoza with a fine play from the hole to get Steinbach, who is one for three now, the first down in the sixth inning. I told you earlier that Espinoza had a cyst removed from his side. Makes this play rather easily because he had a slow runner to get. When shortstops go to their right, often they circle the ball and come up throwing on the run. That looked more like a play that Walt Weiss would make. Throwing on the move. Here is Walt Weiss at the plate. Switch hitter shows the butt. This will be a tough play for Leritz. We saw a similar bunt yesterday where the ball just doesn't roll foul here. It stays inside the line. Yeah, that bunt yesterday actually started off foul and ended up about a foot and a half fair. So if you bunt it fair, you know it's not going to go foul. Later, it's a strong throw, barehanded pickup, a very close play at first base, but Weiss was safe. He's on base with one out, and Willie Randolph is up. We've already seen Oakland use the hit and run one time today. We might see it again. Well, thinking the same thing through over. You know, Jack, we might see it, but one of the combinations, remember we talked about earlier, got to be a pitcher that throws strikes, a hitter that makes contact. 
but a pitcher that primarily keeps the ball down. Plunk keeps the ball up, and he's wild. It's tough to put a ball in play on the ground against Eric Plunk. They pitch out, so the Yankees thinking hit and run. And it's ball one to the batter, Randolph. A lot, of, a lot of baseball fans say, well, what's the difference in hit and run situations? Well, if a pitcher is wild, he doesn't throw a lot of strikes, and he keeps a lot of balls up. Then if you put the hit and run on, the chances of the hitter putting the ball in play in the air are better than a guy who keeps the ball down. Runner not going, and that's ball two. He might go now. One on, one out, sixth inning, four to one, Oakland. They haven't scored since the first inning. McGuire capped that first inning with a three-run homer. Dave Henderson drove in the first run. Hitting room to the right side. Randolph is good at going in that direction. That's that spin move from Eric Plunk. Don Drysdale used to use that move with the Dodgers. What happens is you put weight on your left foot and you spin to first base. It's very close to a balk because you're really deceiving the runner. Are still not going and ball three. Perhaps you're right, Tim, about not running because Plunk does get wild yeah, at times. Yeah, he just doesn't throw enough strikes to, to put the hit and run against him. Allowed only two steals in nine attempts this season. Bob Guerin, an excellent thrower behind the plate. Plunk pumps the strike in there and it's three and one. Matter of fact, that's one of the really positive things for the Yankees, their defensive catching. Bob Guerin and the other catchers this year have thrown out 43% of the runners. That leads the major leagues. Runner at first, one out. Three and one on the batter. And a fly ball, slicing. to the mound to talk to his pitcher. Three and two the count. He'll be running right now because it's three two one out. Renee Latchman over at third base and you saw Weiss lift his head up. He's saying give it to me again. I want to make sure. Now I probably look at the first base coach. A lot of them look back to the first base coach and if the first base base coach winks then he's going. throw over there by Plunk. It used to be if you're the runner at first base, you look at your first base coach, one wink you're stealing, two winks a hit and run. Well, right here with the count three and two, all you need to do is wink. <laughs> runner goes. And the throw is too late. But the batter is what? Out on strikes? I think so. The batter Randolph can't be looted. Are you kidding me, he says? I thought he swung at it. I did too. I thought he went too far. The ball out of the strike zone, but Willie couldn't hold up. Take one more look at it. Well, I don't know from that angle. The hands went through the strike zone, but the bat head didn't. It was interesting. One more look from this angle. Yeah, I th that's too far. That's the second strikeout for Plunk, and that's the eighth stolen base for Walt Weiss. Now Garen is going to talk it over and he says hey we've got Lansford up and Jennings next right hander in Lansford but a left hander in Jennings but this is one of those rare situations where you would be more inclined to pitch around a good hitter like Lansford not that not that Rod, that Doug Jennings isn't a good hitter but he's just he just doesn't have as many at bats as Lansford does Lansford second in the American League in hitting last year as Lee Guterman is warming for the Yankees. Lansford has two singles. Faces Plunk for the first time. And ball one. I don't think he'll get much to hit in this at bat. We're in the bottom of the sixth, and it's four to one in favor of Oakland. Another runner at second, two out. Strike at the knees. One and one. 38 runs batted in this year. Ball 
too. Look at that constant movement with the bat head, the fingers, the hands, always active. You wouldn't teach a young hitter to hit this way. It all has to do with style. And the count goes to three and one. It looks like they are indeed pitching around him. Some pitchers, catchers, managers don't like to pitch around the batter. Either walk him or pitch to him and try to get him out. I think there are times to do both. There are times sometimes to just put him on and other times to pitch around. I think this is a pitch around situation. There's a strike, however. He got the breaking ball over on three and one. A pitch around situation is one in which you want the hitter to hit your pitch. And that pitch, a very good slider on the outside corner. Nothing fat. Only that's, lean pitches. That's what Plunk is thinking right here. Steps off. Bottom of the sixth, four to one Oakland. They haven't scored since the first inning. Three and two with two out. And he walks. Second pass by Plunk, and let's pass it over to Greg Gumbel. Well, Jack, the Mets are uh, not enjoying the afternoon at Shea Stadium. Ryan Sandberg with a man on in the eighth inning. That's his National League leading 27th home run of the season. And uh, the Cubs have it all their own way this afternoon. Ten to one, and they're still batting in the eighth, Jack. favor of the Cubs. Here comes Stump Merrill. We're going to see our fourth Yankee pitcher of the afternoon. It's going to be Lee Guterman. Two on, two out. The new pitcher is Lee Guterman, a record of seven and four and one save. And he takes over for Eric Funk. Funk pitched an inning and two thirds. He leaves two men on. And he gave one hit, struck out two, walked two. Yeah, and there, there's a situation where he was supposed to pitch around Carney Lansford, and he did indeed pitch around Carney Lansford. And once he did it and he walked him, he's replaced by Guterman. And now Lance Blankenship comes off the bench to hit for Doug Jennings. Jennings was one for three. Blankenship had two hits yesterday. Head of the game as a pinch hitter, got a hit and stayed in. On at second base, Walt Weiss. He singled and Lansford on base for the third time today. He walked two on, two out. Blankenship batting 157. That's low. That's ball two. Jose Canseco staying on his feet with a bad back and the sciatic nerve problem. about the third out and two left makes it seven left for Oakland today four to one Oakland they've been ahead throughout it went into the seventh inning we go Bob Welch performing strongly and he throws ball one to the leadoff hitter Lance Blankenship stays in the game after pinch hitting unsuccessfully and he's in left field Jim Leritz is first up he's 0 for one with a walk calls time seven hits for the A's and three for the Yanks well hit ball for a base hit by Leritz gives New York some life here in the seventh inning here's what's transpired thus far first of all New York has dominated in the run scoring department against Oakland this year had one run yesterday and one today and they've been outscored 41 to 6 this wow. season and they're 0 for 8 against them. McGuire hit his 29th home run with two on and nobody out in the first. The RBI for New York by Bob Guerin in the second inning. After two two out walks. Here comes Guerin again. He singled and drove in a run and then he struck out and he fouls one strike one. 
is the first time in the game that the Yankees have put their leadoff man on base. Third time through the order. The batting order has seen Bob Welch. Now Bob Welch may be tiring a bit and for that reason Todd Burns is up and throwing for the athletics. At third fourth time through the order it's much easier to to hit a pitcher as you see Todd Burns. You know you know what the pick you know how he's going to work you from a catcher standpoint you don't want to work a hitter the same way the third time that you've worked him the first two times. He's out in front on the count to Garen and throws it high. Welch up to 100 pitches. They'd like to get him through this seventh inning and then take advantage of that outstanding bullpen the A's possess. It's two and two to Garrett. The Yankees have left five. They've had men on base in five of the seven innings. Cardinals. Beat the Pirates as you saw and the Dodgers win their game over Atlanta. But they failed to pick up ground on Cincinnati. The Reds beat the Giants. Is this a double play? It certainly is. And that's the last thing the Yankees needed here. different ways for a second baseman to protect himself on double play balls routine for Lansford but not routine for Randolph watch him use the bag for protection at second base Randolph doesn't have the mobility that he once had see him use the bag right there so that bag can protect the second baseman there are different ways you can do that you can come across the bag and cheat or when you get the ball early you can use that bag and that's what Willie did right there. We have a pinch hitter Jesse Barfield and he is batting for the shortstop Espinosa with two out here in the seventh not a very propitious spot to use him but the Yanks employ him nonetheless you know you know what I think I think a lot of times managers will say you're going to be the hitter if one of the first two guys gets on and Layritz was the first guy on now the double play and Barfield's there and he just goes up to hit. It's not a good spot to hit to use Jesse Barfield. They lifted Barfield the other day for a pinch hitter, Mel Hall, and that ticked him off a little bit. Yeah, he's not real happy. He leads the Yankees in home runs, first year of a three year contract, and he is not happy at all being platoon. That's with two out, and a breaking ball got him there, and it's two and two. That double play just might propel Bob Welch through the rest of this game. And he has had two complete games. Ball three. We showed you Burns in the open bullpen earlier. He's seated now. So they still like the way Welch is performing. Three and two to Barfield. This batter has 15 home runs and a breaking ball. Is fouled. It almost stayed in Hassey's glove. Hey, a lot of people think because you had that mask on, foul tips like this don't hurt. I guarantee you they hurt. That mask will twist around. It did, fortunately for Ron, hit the glove first. No, it didn't hit the glove first. That staggered the catcher, Hassey. That'll stagger you, I guarantee you. Three and two, two out, four to one, Oakland, top of the seventh. And ball four. I don't know why he tried to get that breaking ball over Tim with a three run lead. Two out, being pretty stubborn, isn't he? Well, there there are there are a lot of a lot of different ways to approach that I mean do you do you allow the score the reason that some pitchers are not good pitchers when they have a big lead is because they cease pitching the same way before they got the big lead I mean it's a lot of it has to do with feel a pitcher sometimes pitchers think they can get the slider over better than the fastball I mean he's been missing with the fastball all afternoon hi the Yankees have been helping him with a lot of high fastballs 
Cobb's gone to one and one on Kelly. He's one for three. And a lot depends on how the catcher feels the pitcher is throwing. Also. Yeah, but I mean, you know, there's the guy with the ball. There's the guy with the ball. He should be the one to make the decision. He's out in front of this batter, one and two. Now it's Rick Honeycutt warming up in the bullpen. Todd Burns, and now it is Honeycutt. Kelly, one for three, bounces it to Lansford, wants the short throw. The inning's over. A double play, one left for the Yankees, who have stranded six, seventh inning stretch, 4 1, Oakland. There's a picture of the Oakland Alameda Naval Station where the U.S. Navy ship Mercy, a hospital ship, leaves tomorrow morning for the Mideast. That's a shot from our Goodyear blimp. We are also obviously hoping it's not going to be used. Correcto. Tonight on CBS, evening news with Connie Chung in 60 minutes with a bonus, the the very latest on what's happening in the Middle East. You can stay on top of that crisis. Followed by a CBS Monday night movie, Escape from Sobibor. All tonight on CBS. Very dramatic movie, by the way. So good viewing for you all evening long. And here we go into the bottom of the seventh inning. And David Henderson leads it off here in the bottom of the seventh. 4-1 Oakland. He single home a run in the first. Scored ahead of McGuire's homer. Walked and flied out one for two. Ball one from Guterman. And we have a new shortstop for New York. Wayne Tollison, a shortstop, the first time he's played in this series. Look over after Espinosa was lifted for the pinch hitter. And Henderson wanted the umpire to check the baseball. of the day for New York. Mike Witt against whom all four runs were charged. Jeff Robinson did well and so did Eric Plunk. And Guterman got the final out in the sixth. One ball, two strikes. Comes in bunches in that catching position. You remember Ron Hassey getting one in the mask in the top half of this inning and now it's Bob Guerin's turn. Wow. That one really hurt. That went right through that chest protector. Staggered him. Nobody on or out and Henderson hits it to Leyridge. Good job. And one up. Next Saturday we continue our baseball coverage here on CBS. And the Pirates will be in Cincinnati, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Now, that game has been changed from a night game to a day game for those of you who attend the Cincinnati Red Games. And others will see the Angels taking on the Boston Red Sox from Fenway Park. There are a couple of good matchups. Before they can get home, the Red Sox have to play here starting tomorrow night. McGuire hit a three-run homer. Left three on in the second and then struck out. Get into a force out with the base had loaded in the second inning. Two and oh the count. Yang still have a chance in this one. They'll have the number two hitter to lead it off in the eighth inning. Hey, we talked about Carney Lansford and that stay focused logo. That has been kind of the rallying cry of the athletics all year long. Another one for Leritz. Oh, he got him. He picked it up in time, too. And Tony Russo talks all the time about changing the message. He said the message might be the same, but you got to change the message. Just reword it. 
to keep the inspiration year after year after year. And these guys, well, they have a juggernaut. No question about that. And you mentioned earlier, Tim, the leadership among the players, uh -huh. Lansford and McGuire and Steinbach and the others. You have it on every level. You have leadership on every level, from the general manager right down through the coaches, the players. And it adds up to championships. Here's Hesse. 0 for 2 with a walk. Bottom of the seventh, two out, four to one. Oakland, and that's a strike. On that last play, that ground ball to Laritz, uh, the throw was low, but it wasn't in the dirt. But watch Kevin Moss. He drops the ball. Missed it. Yeah. Actually, it's off his glove, and then he picks it up barehanded. <laughs> Why, just off the glove. Fortunately for Kevin, he stays there, and he picks it up barehanded to retire Mark McGuire. McGuire gave him plenty of time to make that play. Yeah, Mark is not, not speedy. Two and two to Hassey with two up. And Leyritz will throw out the side. After seven, it is four to one in favor of the Oakland A's. CBS Sports presents Major League Baseball. Today's game is brought to you by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. And by the companies of the Prudential. Come to the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Steve Sachs leads it off here in the top of the eighth inning. And then there are three left-handed batters coming up for the Yankees, Azokar, Hall, and Moss. And that's why Rick Honeycutt continues to throw for the athletics in the bullpen. Heading and one for Weiss. And one gone here in the eighth inning. And Sachs 0 for 4. limited to only four hits by Welch who has gone the distance and is trying for a complete game for the third time this year. I don't know whether he's going to have a chance for it. I'll tell you La Russa, one of his strong points is regardless of what happens if he thinks a reliever is ready to come in the game and big matchups he'll bring them in one pitch one out Welch got the out and I think he's going to make a move to Honeycutt. He doesn't care what happened. Welch has over 100 pitches now it's up to the bullpen. I think he'll make the move right now. And he makes the moves before the trouble starts. Yeah. I think that's a good thing, too. I'm not positive he's going to Honeycutt, but yeah, he just made the move. And the crowd here, 48,000, salutes Bob Welsh, who leaves with a 4 to 1 lead and one out here in the eighth inning. And Rick Honeycutt will come from the bullpen. Seven and a third, one run, four hits, struck out four, walk four. And he gives way to Rick Honeycutt. Who has a record of two and two with five saves. Left handed batter, Azokar. And we're out of the bullpen, throwing a strike. Azokar, and then Hall, and then Moss. If it goes that far. Foul ball, strike two. Tell you, Honeycutt. Extra valuable to the athletics because he's a left-hander. Used specifically in the middle innings, middle to late innings for left-handed hitters. He has five saves. And Gene Nelson has five saves. All the other saves from the bullpen have come from Dennis Eckersley. Some left-handers can't retire left-handed batters. Honeycutt can and does right here, two out. Willie Randolph made the play and Eckersley cranks it up in the bullpen. Tony LaRusso will tell you that he rarely gets Eckersley's Eckersley up without using him. So I would imagine if if Honeycutt retires the left-hander Hall that you'll see Eckersley in the ninth inning. He hasn't worked in two games. And one thing about this situation with two out as Mel Hall bounces one to first down in order they go. 
They've already used Jesse Barfield off the Yankee bench. Now we're into the bottom of the eighth, and it's still four to one open. Since divisional play, the Orioles have won all the games during the season. They did that back in 1970. They beat the Royals 12 to nothing, or 12 games in a row. And then in 79, it was the Orioles over the A's, 11 straight. And then in 1988, most recently, the Royals over the Orioles, 12 straight. And if Oakland nails down this victory, they'll be 9 and 0 against the Yankees this year. It's the switch hitter, Felix Jose, leading it off. And he's 0 for 3. Lee Guterman, the pitcher, and a foul out of play. That, by the way, excludes the 1981 strike season when baseball was on strike for a little over two months. Some of the 48,000 scrambling for that foul ball off the bat of Jose and his ball, too. Oakland runs in the first inning. One driven in by Henderson and a three run homer by McGuire. Out goes two, three and one on the leadoff man in the eighth. And a base hit for Felix. His first of the day and number eight for Oakland. the fourth hit for the athletics since the first inning. Felix Jose, big, strong guy. I'll tell you one thing. You go through that Oakland clubhouse and it looks like a football clubhouse. I don't think I've seen a better trained Major League Baseball club than the Oakland Athletics. And I'm talking about 31 years. They are big and they do a lot of uh, work with the weights. Uh huh. Matter of fact, one of their coaches, even their coaches are in shape. Renee Latchman at third and over at first base, Dave McKay, and he's the strength and fitness coach. Here's Dave. He's in shape himself, isn't he? Yeah. Lead off man is on. Look at that. Base hit up the middle by Steinbach. His second. Two on and nobody out. Low ball right handed hitters are much more prevalent in baseball today. I really don't know the reason for it. Steinbach a low ball hitter. He gets a sinker from Guterman spanks it back up the middle. Hey there's just there are just many more low ball right handed hitters. It used to be almost everybody as you look at Dave Rigetti warming up. It used to be in baseball pretty much left handers were low ball hitters right handers were high ball hitters. That's not the case anymore. They're more low ball hitting right handed hitters in the game today than ever I think. I don't see if La Russa wants to bunt with two on and nobody out in the bottom of the eighth and his club leading four to one. He's the first hits against Guterman. And Weiss pull the bat back ball one. Hey, it wouldn't be a good time or it would be a good time to change things. You see how the infield is pushed toward the first base side. It's wide open on the left side. Weiss is having a good year. It'd be a good time for the hit and run. You got a sinker ball pitcher on the mound. Steady bunts and it goes foul. But they might switch off. A situation like this, you'll see this Oakland club function perform. They get it right. What they try to do, they usually get done. Got the shortstop Tollison covering second base. The second baseman going to first. And Moss covering the left side of the infield open. Sinker ball pitcher is going to get some ground balls. One ball, one strike. Bunting again and a pitch out. Garen looking for a throw, but there was none. I think the Yankees were looking for a hit and run play. But if you're looking for a hit and run play, the shortstop shouldn't be shouldn't be covering second. Jim Lairich, the third baseman, giving the signal. That's 
is whether they're going to put the rotation play on. Now, on the rotation play, you may be familiar with it. The third baseman, first baseman charge. The shortstop goes to third, and the second baseman goes to first base. And meanwhile, the count has gone to three and one, and Guterman might load them up with nobody out. Yeah, through all this strategy, the pitcher's got to throw strikes. The launcher to the batter and the runners. It is a good time to hit and run right now. Weiss, a contact hitter. If the pitch is a ball, you take it. They are not going. And the buck plays to third too late. Sacrifice and a fielder's choice. Base are loaded, nobody out, and nothing breaks the game open any more than that particular play where you fail to get an out. Yeah, no error given on this play. It's a fielder's choice. Sacrifice, obviously, as Jack said, for Weiss. Moss just a little tardy. A big jump from second base by Jose. And that brings the Yankee manager out. Jose got in there ahead of the throw and Stump Merrill talks to Guterman. Sacrifice and a fielder's choice. A lot of head shaking going on out there. There's Brigetti in the bullpen. Hasn't been called out there yet. Oakland already leading four to one. Pitcher will stay in with the bases loaded and nobody out. the career leader in saves. Back in 1986, he had 46 saves. That set a major league record, but look at Eckersley. He could blow that right out of the tank this year with 37 already, with too much left to go in the season. And he is relaxing in the bullpen. Randolph at the plate, hit into a triple play a couple of days ago. Base and loaded, nobody out. And a play to home. And the first is not made. They just get the one out and a fielder's choice. Infield in, and this ball hit fairly well to Tollison. I'll tell you the play there. Garen, because Steinbach hesitated at second, instead of thinking about going to first, I think you should think about going to third. It'd be one of the, you could see Steinbach hesitate at second base. Why he hesitated, I don't know. But it would be one of those rare six, two, five plays. And now the switch by Stump Merrill to Rigetti. Base is loaded, watch uh, nobody out, and watch the runner at second base, Terry Steinbach, hesitate on the ball hit to Tollison. The ball hit right to Tollison, now right there. You see Steinbach, for some reason, was going back towards second base. Now the play's in front of the catcher, Bob Guerin, and for some reason, Bob turns to throw to first base. That's that unusual situation where you could have a 6-2-5 double play. And it keeps the bases loaded with one out now and brings up against Dave Rigetti, Carney Lansford. He's had two hits and a walk. He replaces Guter. Base and loaded, one out. Seems like Stum Merrill's done his homework because Lansford's only five for 24 against Dave Rigetti while being three for seven against Guterman. But Carney has not handled Rigetti very well throughout his career. The Yanks already trailing four to one here in the bottom of the eighth. Can't afford to give up any more runs. The pitch is high, one and one. Rigetti with 24 saves and a record of one and two. Lancer, two singles and a walk. Base it loaded, one out. And a hit. Kelly 
comes up firing. Two runs score, and it's six to one. Third hit of the day for Lancer. And the Oakland crowd loves it. Six runs on ten hits. Barney Lansford, three hits Friday night, three hits yesterday, three hits today, and this last one, a key hit that may have wrapped it up for the Athletics. RBI's number 39 and 40 on the year. I'll tell you, that Lansford, a professional hitter. He can hit. Willie Randolph stopped at second base. Here's Blankenship who pinch hit, grounded out, and stayed in the game to play left. time since May of 88 that Lansford has had three consecutive three hit games. But you can see when he gets hot he can tear it up. Two on one out. It's six to one in the eighth. That's over but low. First and second one out. No regret he couldn't get the double play ball as Lansford singles home a couple. Second, Lansford at first. Maybe a double play ball on that one. And they got them both, but two more runs for the A's, and after eight, they lead it six to one. We go. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Six to one Oakland into the ninth. Rick Honeycutt came on and got the last two outs in the eighth. We'll pitch to Kevin Moss who's one for three. And he gets ahead on the count. Oh no Moss they want here a bouncing ball for Randolph. Honeycutt is retired three in a row. Since it is the last time the Texas Rangers will be in Chicago this year, the last day, it's still a rain delay. Man, that's a long rain delay. The White Sox entering today's action. Four and a half games behind the Oakland Athletics. They beat Texas a doubleheader on Friday and lost yesterday. And there are the standings up to date. And, of course, the Athletics only two outs away from another victory. And Honeycutt, if he nails it down, will get his sixth save of the year. Throws one low to Matt or to Rick Cerrone, who's the pinch hitter. Batting four, Matt Noakes. Cerrone batting in the ninth, and the Yankee attack against Oakland has been woeful. Awful, terrible, lousy, puny. All of those, all of the above. There's the line drive. Grabs it for the second out. One of the best shortstops in the game. I guess Tony LaRusso's players say, what do you need? You need a good defensive play? Okay. Carney Lansford, you need a clutch base hit? Okay. You need the long ball with McGuire? All right. We can do that. And remember, Henderson and Canseco have not played the last two games. Canseco played Friday night, but not Ricky Henderson. When this game is over, Tim and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 in the player's behalf to the Special Olympics. The Yankees have scored two runs in the last 36 innings against Oakland, and they're about to lose for the ninth time this year without a victory against the A's. The count 2-0. To Leyritz, who has a single and a walk and one of the four New York hits. There's been no errors in this game. With two out, a strike. Yankees have left six, hit into a double play. And the count moves to three and one. 
Both bullpens are quiet. Bob Welch is one out away from his 19th victory of the year. It'll be 19 and four. Honeycutt makes it three and two. Larich doing a good job of working the count, trying to get out of this club trailing six to one. Some years he's played with quite a few clubs, but he's in the right place now. Three and two. Another foul. Tommy Chung has the evening news, ever so important these days here on CBS, and then 60 minutes. Cat come in here having won 12 out of 18, but they can slow down. There's ball four, and that's the fifth walk given to the Yankees today. Good job of hitting by Leverage with his club. Five runs behind. We've had some pretty pictures from our Goodyear blimp, Columbia. <laughs> Piloted by Charles Russell. We want to thank them for the good work. And here today and for the football game last night at Candlestick Park where the Raiders beat the 49ers. Bob Guerin has driven in the only Yankee run. They play behind the runner at first with two out. Ball one. Get another runner on there. We might see Eckersley before the day is over. The Athletics have held the Yankees to only six runs scored all season long in 1983 since divisional play 1983 the Dodgers held the Phillies to 15 runs during the season beating them 11 of 12 times the irony of that was that the Phillies came back to beat the Dodgers in the playoffs and advanced to the World Series they won three out of four in postseason play well, these Yankees have been punchless today and all year against the athletics six runs this is their ninth game. And if they drop this one, they will have lost all six played in Oakland. Well, Honeycutt retired four in a row. Now he's sprung a leak. He walked Leritz. He's three and out to Garen. Still nothing doing in the Oakland bullpen. Rick, you're on your own. For the moment. a strike. On the East Coast, local news will follow CBS baseball. Three and one the count. With the runner at first, two out. Oakland got four in the first, three and a home run by McGuire, scored two in the eighth. They're sitting pretty, but now a walk. The second by Honeycutt. Of keeping track of things. And the phone right behind Tony LaRusso. The key thing now, I think that's going to get Eckersley up. When you see Dave Duncan going to the phone, and there's Eck. Call to the bullpen. He warmed up earlier. Shouldn't take him too long. Dave Duncan, the pitching coach, goes out and talks to Honeycutt. Well, those short relievers, those guys who get a lot of saves, they can warm up with a handshake. He warmed up earlier, so couple of tosses down there and he'll be ready but Honeycutt now has to pitch to the batter after the visit to the mound by Duncan. This pitcher started running a little bit and Honeycutt couldn't find the strike zone. But he can afford to challenge the batter with a five run lead. Balboni is the hitter. Here's Jesse Barfield. He drew a walk. Two on, two out. Ball one. Some of the fans have left. Others started to leave and then came back after Honeycutt walked one man and then another. Now 
Rabboni should make him pitch. He should take a strike. There's ball two. Looks like he has that idea. You, we've talked about it on our broadcast before, Jack. You don't see that in baseball. It's one of the disappearing things. It's fundamentally sound if you're not the tying run in the ninth inning, seventh, eighth, ninth inning to take a pitch. And even though there are two on, Balboni does not represent the tying run. He needs to get on base. Reds won earlier today. There is a strike, and it's two to one. So they beat the Giants six to four. The Cardinals beat the Pirates six to nothing. And the Dodgers won to stay as close as they were. And the Cubs beat the Mets. Indians went over the Tigers. And the Blue Jays dropped one. Balboni fouls at two and two. Still rain delayed at Comiskey Park. And the Royals beat Milwaukee. Montreal in the sixth inning. Orioles leading over the Angels 10 to 1. Montreal won their game to take advantage of the losses by the Pirates and the Mets. Gets called and this one is over. The Honeycutt causes the Mets to leave two more and they have stranded eight. Our Chevrolet most valuable player is Bob Welch, who won his 19th game of the year today to run his record at 19 and four. Did a good job for seven in the third innings and a save for Rick Honeycutt, which is his sixth of the year. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 in Bob Welch's behalf to the Special Olympics. So Oakland at this moment five games ahead of the White Sox and back to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right Jack thank you very much and we want to remind you that coming up this Friday night it is overtime with Pat O'Brien and Pat's guests will include Terry Bradshaw George Foreman and MC Hammer it gets underway at 11 30 p.m. And then on Saturday CBS Sports continues its coverage of Major League Baseball some of you will see the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cincinnati Reds while others will watch the California Angels visit the Boston Red Sox and we'll be here with the pregame show at 1 o'clock Eastern Time I'm Greg Gumbel in New York for Jack Buck and Tim McCarver for all of us here at CBS Sports thanks for watching everyone CBS Sports presents Major League Baseball. Today's game has been brought to you by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Sears diehard battery now with more power when you need it most. And by AFTA, sensible care for sensitive skin. AFTA by Menon. The Yankees are 0 for 9 against the Athletics. 6 to 1 A's the final today. been watching Major League Baseball on CBS, home of the League Championship Series.